Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. So, uh, yeah, we're going to speak from, I gave you the verse, right? Uh, 10. Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo 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 Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam namaskrityam naram jaiva narotamam daivim sarasatim vyasam tato jaya mudirat nasta praeshu vabadreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama shloke bhaktir bhavati naishtiki. So we're going to speak from Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th canto, 1st chapter, the advent of Lord Krishna. Verse number four. Navritta Tarsher Upagi Yamanad Bavosha Dutch Chotra Mano Biradma Ka Utama Shloka Gunanunuvadad Pranam Virajita Vina Pashukna. Do we need to have Hindi translation, Prabhu? Uh, no, Maharaj, not required. Reason being, all those who have joined, they know English, Maharaj. So, oh. no English, English oh. translation requires. Okay, very good. I'll read the word meaning. Nivrita, released from. Tashai, lust or material activities. Opagiyamana, which is described or sung. Bhava Oshadat, which is the right medicine for the material disease. Shotra, the process of oral reception. Mana, the subject matter, the subject matter of thought for the mind, Ab abiramat, from the pleasing vibration, from such glorification, ka, who, uttamashloka, of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, guna anuvat, from describing such activities. Puman, a person. Pashugna. Oh, oh, I missed something. Oh. Virajeta, can keep himself aloof. Vina, except Pashugna, either a butcher or one who is killing his own personal existence. Translation, glorification of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is performed in the parampara system, that is, it is conveyed from spiritual master to disciple. Such glorification is relished by those no longer interested in the false temporary glorification of this cosmic manifestation. Descriptions of the Lord are the right medicine for the conditioned soul undergoing repeated birth and death. Therefore, who can cease hearing such glorification of the Lord, except a butcher or one who is killing his own self? Purport. It's a long purport. We'll go through it bit by bit. I may speak as we go through it. In India, it is a practice among the general population 
uh, to hear about Krishna either from Bhagavad Gita or from Srimad Bhagavatam in order to gain relief from the disease of repeated birth and death. Although India is now fallen, when there is when there is a message that someone will speak about Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam, thousands of people will gather to, to hear. That ver this verse indicates, however, that such recitation of Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam must be done by persons completely freed from material desires, nivrita tashai. Everyone within the material world, beginning from Brahma down to the insignificant ant, is full of material desires for sense enjoyment, and everyone is busy in sense gratification. But when thus engaged, one cannot fully understand the value of Krishna Kata, either in the form of Bhagavad Gita or in Srimad Bhagavatam. If we hear the glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, from liberated persons, this hearing will certainly free us from the bondage of material activities. But hearing Srimad Bhagavatam spoken by a professional reciter cannot actually help us achieve liberation. Krishna Kata is very simple. In Bhagavad Gita it is said that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. As he himself explains, Mataparataram Nanyat Kinchidasti Dhananjaya. O Arjun, there is no truth superior to me. Simply by understanding this fact that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one can become a liberated person. But especially in this age, because people are interested in hearing Bhagavad Gita from unscrupulous persons who depart from the simple presentation of Bhagavad Gita and distort it for their personal satisfaction, they fail to derive the real benefit. There are big scholars, politicians, philosophers and scientists who speak on Bhagavad Gita in their own polluted way and people in general hear from them, being uninterested in hearing the glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead from a devotee. A devotee is one who has no other motive for reciting Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam than to serve the Lord. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has therefore advised us to hear the glories of the Lord from a realized person, Bhagavata Puridi Bhagavata Stani. Unless one is personally a realized soul in the science of Krishna consciousness, a neophyte should not approach him to hear about the Lord, for this is strictly forbidden by Srila Sanatana Goswami, who quotes from the Padma Purana. Avaishnava mukodgirnam putam hari ketam britam shravanam naiva kartavyam sarpopishta yatapaya. One should avoid hearing from a person not situated in Vaishnava behavior. A Vaishnava is nivrita Krishna. That is, he has no material purpose, for his only purpose is to preach Krishna consciousness. So-called scholars, philosophers and politicians exploit the importance of Bhagavad Gita 
by distorting its meaning for their own purposes. Therefore, this verse warns that Krishna Kata should be recited by a person who is Nivritta Krishna. Sukadeva Goswami epitomizes the proper reciter for Srimad Bhagavatam and Parikshit Maharaj who purposefully left his kingdom and family prior to meeting de death epitomizes the person fit to hear it. A qualified rec reciter of Srimad Bhagavatam gives the right medicine, Bhavo Shadi, for the conditioned souls. The Krishna consciousness movement is therefore trying to train qualified preachers to recite Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita throughout the entire world so that people in general in all parts of the world may take advantage of this movement and thus be relieved of the threefold miseries of material existence. The instructions of Bhagavad Gita and the descriptions of Srimad Bhagavatam are so pleasing that almost anyone suffering from the threefold miseries of material existence will desire to hear the glories of the Lord from these books and thus benefit on the path of liberation. Two classes of men, however, will never be interested in hearing the message of Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. Those who are determined to commit suicide and those determined to kill cows and other animals for the satisfaction of their own tongues. Although such persons may make a show of hearing Srimad Bhagavatam at a Bhagavat Sapta, this is but another creation of the karmis who cannot derive any benefit from such a performance. The word Pashugna is important in this connection. Pashugna means butcher. Persons fond of performing ritualistic ceremonies for elevation to the higher planetary systems must offer sacrifices, yagna, by killing animals. Lord Buddha Dev therefore rejected the authority of the Vedas because his mission was to stop animal sacrifice, which are recommended in Vedic ritualistic ceremonies. Nandasi yagna vidya ahaha shruti jatam sadaya ridaya dashita pashugatam keshavadrita buddha sharera jai jagadish ahare. Even though animal sacrifices are sanctioned in Vedic ceremonies, men who kill animals for such ceremonies are considered butchers. Butchers cannot be interested in Krishna consciousness, for they are already materially allured. Their only interest lies in developing comforts for the temporary body. Bogaishwarya prasaptanam taya parita chaitasam vayavasayatmika buddhi samadona vidyate. In the minds of those who are too attached, to sense enjoyment, material opulence, and who are bewildered by such things, the resolute determination of devotional service to the Supreme Lord does not take place. Srila Naratam Das Thakur says, Manushya Janan Mapai, Radha Krishna Nabajiya, Janiya Shunya Vishakainu. Anyone who is not Krishna conscious, and who therefore does not engage in the service of the Lord is also Pashugna, for he is willingly drinking poison. Such a person cannot be interested in Krishna Kata because he still has a desire for material sense gratification. He is not Nivrita Krishna. As it is said, as it is said, uh, 
Trivargikas Tate Purusha Vimukta Harimedasa. Those interested in Trivarga, that is in Dharma, Artha and Kama, are religious for the sake of achieving material position with which to gain better facilities for sense gratification. Such persons are killing themselves by willingly keeping themselves in the cycle of birth and death. They cannot be interested in Krishna consciousness. For Krishna Kata, topics about Krishna consciousness, there must be a speaker and a hearer, both of whom can be interested in Krishna consciousness if they are no longer interested in material topics. One can actually see how this attitude automatically develops in persons who are Krishna conscious. Although the devotees of the Krishna consciousness movement are quite young men, they no longer read materialistic newspapers, magazines and so on for they are no longer interested in such topics, nivritta tarshai. They completely give up the bodily understanding of life. For topics concerning Uttama Sloka, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the spiritual master speaks and the disciple hears with attention. Unless both of them are free from material desires, they cannot be interested in topics of Krishna consciousness. The spiritual master and disciple do not need to understand anything more than Krishna, because simply by understanding Krishna and talking about Krishna, one becomes a perfectly learned person. Kasmin nu bhagavo Vignate sarvamidam vignatam bhavan bhavatiti mundaka upanishad. The Lord sits within everyone's heart, and by the grace of the Lord, the devotee receives instructions directly from the Lord Himself, who says in Bhagavad Gita, Sarvasya chahamridi sani vista mataksmitir gyanam apohanam cha. Vidais chasar vera hameva vidya vidanti krit veda vid eva cham. I am seated in everyone's heart. From me comes remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. By all the Vedas I am to be known. Indeed, I am the compiler of Vedanta and I am the knower of the Veda. Krishna consciousness is so exalted that one who is perfectly situated in Krishna consciousness under the direction of the spiritual master, is fully satisfied by reading Krishna Kata as found in Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita and similar Vedic literature. Since merely talking about Krishna is so pleasing, we can simply imagine how pleasing it is to render service to Krishna. When discourses on Krishna Kata take place between a liberated spiritual master and his disciple, others also sometimes take advantage of hearing these topics and also benefit. These topics are the medicine to stop the repetition of birth and death, the cycle of repeated birth and death by which one takes on different bodies again and again is called bhava or bhava rog. If anyone willingly or unwillingly hears Krishna Kata, his bhava rog, the disease of birth and death, will certainly stop. Therefore, Krishna Kata is called bhavoshada, the remedy to stop the repetition of birth and death. Karmis or persons attached to material sense enjoyment generally cannot give up their material desire. But Krishna Kata is such a potent medicine that if one is induced to hear Krishna Kirtan, he will certainly be freed from this disease. A practical example is Dhruva Maharaj, who at the end of his tapasya was fully satisfied. 
When the Lord wanted to give Dhruva a benediction, Dhruva refused it. Swamim kritatosmi varam nanyachi. My dear Lord, he said, I am fully satisfied. I do not ask for any benediction for material sense gratification. We actually see that even young boys and girls in the Krishna consciousness movement have given up their long practice of bad habits like illicit sex, meat eating, intoxication and gambling. Because Krishna consciousness is so potent that it gives them full satisfaction. They are no longer interested in material sense gratification. Thus ends Srila Prabhupada's purport to the Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th canto, 1st chapter, text number 4. Oma jnana timarandasya jnananjana shalakaya chaksurun militanyena tasmai shri gurave namaha Vancha kaupa tarubhyasya kripa sindhu bhaevaca patitanam pavani bhyo vaishnavibhyo namo namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadegor Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so this is a very powerful purport from Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada is really enforcing onto us the importance of hearing the topics of Krishna. And how unfortunate are those people who don't hear about Krishna. And you, we can see from this verse how much they're condemned. They're described, to, if they're not interested in hearing about Krishna, then they are pashugna, they are butchers. And we know how the butcher is condemned, right? Jiva va mara vasado vyadi ma jiva ma mara. Jiva Goswami tells like that in one of his purports in Srimad Bhagavatam that for the butcher or the animal killer, don't live or don't die. Because live or die, they're living in hell. And when they die, they go to hell. So that is the situation for the materialistic-minded people who have no interest to hear about Krishna. They're living in hell. When they die, they will go to hell. They're not talking about Krishna. What are they talking about? They're just talking nonsense. All the gramyakata, all the nonsense things of the material world. And what is their life? Just looking at all the literature which is there for the crows. What is described in Srimad Bhagavatam in 1st Canto 5th chapter, described by Narada Muni, Tadvayasam Tirtam Muchanti Manasa, a place of pilgrimage for the crows. People read literatures which have nothing to do with Krishna consciousness, nothing to do with self realization. They're simply literatures glorifying sense gratification in different degrees, in different modes. But it's all literature for the crows. It has no real value for the human life. Krishna consciousness is an opportunity to save people from degradation. We're here in this material world. It's a very dangerous place. We're all seeing the dangers at this time, particularly this year, with the threats of disease, viruses everywhere. So we're very conscious about the importance or the value of our life. We try to protect ourselves. The governments are spending fortunes trying to produce a vaccine to protect people from the disease. Here is the real vaccine to protect people from the disease. Let them hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Let them hear Krishna Kata. This is the real vaccine to protect them from the dangers of material life. And 
just like the vaccine they in inject it in your arm but the effects of the vaccine go to the whole body and so here in Krishna Kata we hear the topics of Krishna it enters the ear and it goes to the heart it goes through the whole body the whole body is transformed by hearing topics of Krishna transcendental literature Therefore, Srila Prabhupada labored so hard to give us this uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. It was his, 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 his real mission presenting the Srimad Bhagavatam. He, would, he sacrificed his time to write these wonderful purports and to translate everything for us, to give us this message of this Srimad Bhagavatam, this fruit of the Vedic literature not just any fruit, but the, the perfect fruit, the ripened fruit, this, this fruit which is uh, easily digestible, so, so important for the people in the Kali Yuga. Be just like we see in Srimad Bhagavatam, the sages, one of the questions he asked, that now that Krishna has left this world, so long as Lord Krishna was present, he was the personification of religion. But now he's gone, where do, we, where do we go to for shelter? Where are the religious principles to be found now? And of course the answer was given, Krishna Swadhamu Pagate Dharma Jnana Debisaha Kalonish Tamdrishamesha Puranarto Dranodrita. That this Srimad Bhagavatam is as brilliant as the sun. And it has arisen just after the departure of Lord Krishna for his own abode. Persons who have lost their vision due to the dense darkness of the age of Kali can get light from this Purana. So this is a situation where in the, the dark age of Kali, we can get light from the Srimad Bhagavatam. The, the Srimad Bhagavatam is as brilliant as the sun, right? So this can bring us into the position of real knowledge, real understanding. We have to hear this message of Srimad Bhagavatam. However, qualifications are required. It's not that, that just, oh, just anybody come and sit down and you can hear Srimad Bhagavatam. And here in this verse, Maharaj Parikshit is describing a particular mood which should be there to get the maximum benefit from hearing topics of Krishna. Of course, hearing topics of Krishna are beneficial for everyone, but there's a, if, if one is nevrita Krishna, then he's particularly qualified to hear and he will particularly benefit. So both the speaker and the hearer are expected to be in this kind of condition, that they've given up all kinds of material desires, they've put aside all thoughts of sense gratification, all thoughts of trying to enjoy this material world, and they just simply want to absorb themselves in hearing. You know, we sometimes say uh, purpose of initiation is that we're given up any thought of material enjoyment. We've given up all plans of sense gratification and material life. And we just want to dedicate our life to the service of Krishna. That is real initiation. When we're in that mood, that we simply want to surrender ourselves fully to Krishna. So this same point is made here in this verse that to get the maximum benefit from hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita, we must put aside all thoughts of sense gratification. We should be Nivrita Krishna, without any desire for trying to enjoy this material world. How can, how can we get to that condition? How, how can we come to that state? Well, by association with devotees, Association is very powerful. We are associating here with Srila Prabhupada. Remember this verse was spoken in the 10th canto. So 
Maharaj Parikshit, we could say he's assuming that, you know, that you've, come, you've heard the first nine cantos. So after hearing the first nine cantos of Srimad Bhagavatam, then one should be Nivrita Trishna. One should have finished with all thought of sense gratification. I've been visiting different temples in India and I see most temples nowadays where they're, they're, they're doing Bhagavatam class from the tenth canto. And so we would expect that all the temples, all the devotees, all the congregation, that they're already Nivrita Trishna. They've given up all desires, all thoughts of sense gratification because they've come to hear the tenth canto. Tenth canto represents, of course, the smiling face of the Supreme Lord. If we're going to look on the face of the Lord, we have to be qualified. We have to have given up all thought of sense gratification. We just want to dedicate ourselves fully to the service of Krishna. So one who actually has this mood, then they can properly hear the message of Srimad Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Gita. However, Srila Prabhupada points out the state of affairs in India, not only India, around the world today, that we have so many professional reciters or so many people maybe speaking on scriptures, with, but they have their material motives. Okay, this was condemned in the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam. In the introductory verse, the second verse, Srila Vyasa Dev talks about Kaitava Dharma, Dharma Projita Kaitava Traparamon and Matsaranam Satam. That the Srimad Bhagavatam completely rejects all religion which are materially motivated. Unfortunately, we do see people bring even into the Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita their material motivations. They bring along their own ideas, their own philosophies, their own motives and purposes. A devotee was telling me that when they often speak, the, they have these big Bhagavat Saptas and they have the professional Bhagavat reciter come and he goes on the stage and he will speak very nicely, powerfully and cry in different emotional displays. And then after, then he comes off the stage, then he smokes beadies. He sits down and gets out his beadies and sets his beadies. You know, not, not exactly Nivrita Trishna. It's, it's you know, he, he, they know Srimad Bhagavatam, <laughs> but they, they never learned to control the senses. They never understood the importance of controlling the mind and senses. So, Followers of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, follow in the teachings of Rupa Goswami and Rupa Goswami describes the importance of sense control. He talks about the Vegas, the very beginning one should control the different urges, vacho vegam, manasa, kroda vegam, jiva vegam, udara, pasta vegam, etan vegam, yuvishaheta dira. Sarvam apimam pretivim shashi. One should control the urge to speak, the mind's demands, actions of anger, the urges of the tongue, the belly, and the genitals. So, this is the beginning of Upadesha Amrita. This is the first step. We want to go on to relish higher things. The, the first qualification is. Controlling the mind and the senses. Very important. Just like in the Astanga Yoga process also, Yam and Niyam are the first step. So similarly also here at Srimad Bhagavatam, we want to relish hearing the topics of Krishna. There has to be proper control over the mind and senses. And the proper mood is to give up all desire for sense gratification. Those in the minds of those who are attached to material opulence and sense gratification, the resolute determination for devotional service does not take place. We have to be very determined 
we want to become Krishna conscious. Now, this year particularly, where it, Krishna is really letting us see the, the nature of this material world, how temporary everything is, how there is really no pleasure in this world other than chanting the holy name and hearing Srimad Bhagavatam doing devotional service. Where is the happiness in this material world? There's no more this uh, going off to Thailand for a holiday or going to Europe or America and like the people all like to travel so much. That's all finished with. That's not going on anymore. Nobody's going traveling. People can't even take their cars hardly. They can hardly drive their car out of the city. So many problems. This is good for us to understand the nature of this material world, that we can give up our attachment to this sense gratification. Right? A little distress is very good. The devotee considers distress the mercy of Krishna. Why? Because with that distress, the devotee understands his karma is being exhausted. And the more we exhaust our karma, the more we're ready for Krishna consciousness. So the sufferings which we undergo are our greatest happiness because they bring us closer to Krishna. We have to learn to, to detach ourselves from this material energy. Of course, we can say, well, it's Krishna's energy. It's all Krishna's energy. That's right. If we use everything for Krishna, it is spiritual. It's not material. Devotee know. We know how to turn material energy into spiritual energy by connecting everything into Krishna's service. This is our duty as devotees. And if that had been happening in the beginning, all of these problems like this coronavirus and everything could have been avoided. All of the problems of the world, they can all be solved by Krishna consciousness. It's the only thing which is lacking in the material world. Krishna consciousness. We want to try to give it, to propagate. This is our duty as devotees, to do this propaganda work. Srila Prabhupada talks about presenting this knowledge around the world. Therefore, we are publishing the books, translating the books into different languages. We just p finished publishing our, the Bhagavad Gita and Krishna book into Thai language. And we also have it in Vietnamese. All of these countries, you know, they, they don't have many books. They don't have much opportunity for spiritual education. People, they hardly read. All they do, they get a newspaper. So it's so important to give them these books and let them get some proper education, proper knowledge. Previous, previously, all they heard was from the Buddhists. The Buddhists were teaching, just like Prabhupada quotes the, Buddha, the, the verse from Dasavatar Stotra here about Lord Buddha, how Lord Buddha came to save the animals. But we want to do more than just save the animals. We want to save the people. The people are also going to hell. The animals, they're being killed. The people who are doing the killing, they're also like animals or lower than animals. So we want to save them from that degraded condition by awakening, awakening them to the importance of Krishna consciousness, to understand First of all, that there is a person behind this material world. There is a controller, there is a creator. That is something very difficult for Buddhists to try to understand, that there is a God. They never heard. They never heard of God before. There are many countries in the world, they never hear about God. They never hear about a controller that... that somebody behind this world, that this world is created. You go to China, 
China is an atheistic country, right? It's a big country, big population, and they're all indoctrinated into atheism, that there is no God, that life is just simply chemicals. We're just chemicals. Life, did, and everything came about by evolution. The chemicals evolved into higher species of life. This is the philosophy which is propagated around the world today. Not only in countries like China, even we go to the West, we, we see everywhere they promote evolution. Darwin's theory is taught. You can go to a, a Christian missionary school and you'll find they're teaching Darwin's theory of evolution. So how important it is for us to preach this Krishna conscious philosophy. It's the greatest philosophy. It's the greatest blessing for the whole human civilization. When we have something valuable, we don't want to just keep it for ourselves. We want to distribute it. We want it to show it to everyone. We want to let everyone know what is the actual truth. Just like Prabhupada quotes in the purport here, that verse from Bhagavad Gita, Mata parataram nanyat kinchit asti dhananjaya. Lord Krishna is saying, there is no truth superior to me. Only Krishna says that. It's a very important verse in the Bhagavad Gita. Because we, there are many other scriptures and there are many other gods, devas and so on, but none of them ever say, like that. None of them, neither Lord Shiva or Lord Brahma or Lord Ganesha or any of them will ever say, there is no truth superior to me. Only Lord Krishna says that. He is establishing his position. Of course, how does Lord Krishna, how is it he's the truth and nobody knows? Krishna explains. Just like the pearl, pearls are strung on a thread. We don't see the thread. We only see the beads. So like that, everything is going on in the world and we don't see who's behind the world. We don't see there is a great personality behind everything, who's arranged everything, who's controlling everything, the director above all others. That is Lord Krishna's position. Very difficult for materialistic people who are absorbed in the body, they're addicted to so many bad habits. Prabhupada talks about how so many, in Prabhupada's time, we saw so many Westerners, young Westerners, come to Krishna consciousness. I was also a young man myself at the time. And we come to Krishna consciousness. And before coming to Krishna consciousness, we didn't have that kind of training. We didn't have that kind of education. And we did have bad habits. But immediately coming to Krishna consciousness, we can give them up. We, can, we understand there's something so much better in life than these habits. These habits is sinful life which just simply brings so much confusion and problems for the world and for individuals as well. People are trying to find happiness. They don't know where to find it. They don't know what is real happiness. They have the illusion of some happiness, which is some sense gratification. And that is what Prahlad Maharaj calls chewing the chewed. There's no real taste there, but people are thinking, oh, oh, this is what people call happiness. They think, oh, I must be happy. I eat meat, I drink. No, the people do this, they, they say this is happiness, so if I do it, I'm happy. They don't, but they don't actually feel any real happiness. They don't feel any pleasure, there's no real satisfaction in these things. And therefore, Prahlad, uh, Prabhupada also quotes Dhruva Maharaj. Dhruva Maharaj is an example of a Karma Misra Bhakta. He had some material desire in the beginning. He wanted a kingdom. He wanted a great kingdom. So he went to the forest and he did some austerity. He did some tapasya for six months. 
And after six months, he was able to see God. Then he was fully satisfied. He came looking for pieces of broken glass, but he found the most beautiful jewel because he found Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness is the most valuable thing the most, the, and it's the, the thing which we can preserve. We take with us, whatever progress we make in this life, we take it with us to the next life. There's no loss and diminution. A little advancement made saves us from the greatest danger. Therefore, Maharaj Parikshit is speaking this verse and encouraging all of us and Srila Prabhupada has written this elaborate purport, encouraging all of us that we must take to Krishna consciousness. We must value this Krishna conscious process more than anything else we value in the world. Our Krishna consciousness is most precious, most important. But it can all be ruined by the wrong association. If we hear from the wrong people, and there, there is always that tendency. There are people who can just ruin everything. They can give us totally the wrong message. You hear from some... We had, we had an example. We had... Uh, there was this one, one lady. She was coming to our programs and she was associating with us. And... Uh, what, she'd studied a lot, she'd been reading a lot of Buddhist books and then she started coming and reading our books and she saw our program and then she decided she would write her own book. And she th told people, she said, Krishna told me Bhagavad Gita is already old. She wants, he wants me to write a new book, so I've written my new book. And people came to her and they became her disciples. And she gave them her initiation and she gave them a, a name and, you know, it, and it was such a farce. You know, the woman didn't have any regulative principles, and, but she just took advantage. And people are so gullible, people are so foolish, you know, that they're, they're easily cheated. And so. Prabhupada quotes the verse about hearing from the wrong people. They, they may be chanting Hare Krishna, but they don't have Krishna consciousness. Their motive is something else. So when they're chanting, it's not really the holy name. They're chanting the Namaparad. It's the, the offensive name. You don't want to hear from these people. We don't want to hear from people who speculate on Srimad Bhagavatam and give their own interpretations. We know how Devananda Pandit was speaking Srimad Bhagavatam, but he didn't know how to recognize a great devotee. And the result was he committed offense against Srivas Pandit. And so, although he was speaking on Srimad Bhagavatam and he had many students coming to him, he didn't actually know the, the real purport of Srimad Bhagavatam. And when the pure devotee came, he could not recognize him. So this, there are, of course, several other examples of people, how they take the positions of the spiritual teachers and try to present the scriptures, giving their own message. So we have to be very careful not to hear from them. One devotee, uh, His Grace Rabindra Swarup Prabhu, is a very scholarly devotee. He's one of the. He's an emeritus GBC. So Rabindra Swarup Prabhu, I remember he told us he said when he was studying at university, he was taking a course in uh, Asian studies and. He had to study some of the writings of Shankaracharya. So he asked Prabhupada about this. He said, Prabhupada, he said, you know, you've warned us that we should never hear from Shankaracharya, that if we hear from him, we'll be doomed. 
But he said, I have to study this in my course. So what should I do? So Prabhupada told him, he said, yes. He said, though so you have to be very careful then. You simply have to be very careful and you have to understand that you're hearing from Shankaracharya and that Shankaracharya, he had a different purpose in mind. His purpose was not to give Krishna consciousness, but his purpose was simply to bewilder the minds of the atheists and to bring them to impersonalism. Ah, as described in Padma Purana, uh, Mayavadam asachastram prachanam bodham uchate that Shankaracharya comes to teach covered Buddhism. The Mayavadi philosophy is asachastra. It's not an eternal religious process. It's asachastra and it's prachanam bodham. It's covered Buddhism. Because they simply, Shankaracharya changed the absolute from zero. The Buddhists were speaking everything is zero, everything is void, nirvishesha, or, or rather sunyabada. And then Shankaracharya comes and says, no, it's not zero, it's one. And he made it nirvishesha, right? For, so from nothingness, he made it to oneness. A little change. But, of course, his purpose was very good in that one sense that he brought back the Vedas. So that was good. Bringing back the Vedas was necessary for the society. And establishing the proper standard, you know, proper qualified brahmanas and proper qualified sannyasis. So that was, that was appreciated. That, that was the work of Shankaracharya. But after Shankaracharya, then the Vaishnava Acharyas came to give the Vaishnava philosophy and finally we have Chaitanya Mahaprabhu coming to give a synthesis of the Vaishnava Acharyas and presenting his Gaudiya Vaishnava teachings to give us the ultimate conclusion of the Vedic knowledge in the form of a Chintya Beda Beda Tattva. So like that, everyone had a purpose, they had a mission, they had a duty to do for the service of the Lord. Now, at this time, our duty is simply to hear and chant. This, the other work was already, has already been done after Lord Buddha. Lord Buddha was in an, an emergency situation. And then, so Shankaracharya had to come, help to adjust things. Then we get the real philosophy. Now we've got the real philosophy. We just simply have to use it. We have to apply it. And we have to speak it. We have to preach it. We have to be willing to go everywhere and present this message of Srimad Bhagavatam. Of course, now it's made easy for us to go everywhere, can simply sit in one place and by satellite we can go everywhere. You can be giving class to Africa and Russia and Australia, you don't have to move anywhere. So convenient for us. This is the nectar of lockdown, you see that you can be in one place and you can visit so many temples, you can meet so many devotees all over the world and present Krishna consciousness. And this way we can fulfill Lord Chaitanya's mission. Nagar Adigram, every town and village the chanting of the holy name should be heard. So we're very happy to have this lockdown. It's a wonderful opportunity for us to increase our preaching to meet more and more devotees, to go more and more places, and to distribute more and more the nectar of Krishna consciousness. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Are there any questions? Haribo Prabhu. Do we have any questions there on the chat or from the anybody listening? I'm not able to hear anything.
Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Uh, uh, thank, thank you Maharaj for uh, giving a wonderful class. Maharaj, uh, I have a simple question, a small question. That uh, how can we uh, build, build our uh, determination Maharaj? Yes, because that de determination is certainly required. How can we become determined in this preach yeah, preaching work? Well, deter our determination is ruined the more we indulge in sense gratification. So we want to be very conscious not to give in to our senses and not to indulge in any kind of sense gratification regulating the senses. Just like Prabhupada mentions how a Krishna conscious devotee, he won't spend time reading mundane newspapers and magazines and all these things because he's got so many other things to read in the form of Srimad Bhagavatam and the, the Bhakti Shastras. There are so many other nectarian books to read. We don't need to read all the mundane literature of the material world. We have this take some determination. Maya looks very attractive. It's very expert. All the lights, the different lights and the decoration, the, the sweet sounds and the wonderful music, and the, how, it, how it's made just to attract the mind and senses. Everything is there to attract the mind and senses, come and enjoy. They produce different fragrant items with the most wonderful aromas and the different things to, for the taste buds, to try to encourage the senses, to uh, try to attract the senses. We have to be a little determined to control the senses, not to give in. So this, this is how we become determined. The more we regulate our senses. So by regulation, the one who is regulated in eating and sleeping, working and recreation, all of these things, working and recreation, you have to be regulated. Don't work too hard. All right, we have to work, but you don't just work all day and no time to chant, no time to do puja, no time for association. Okay, some work you have to do and you have to have some recreation. Not all recreation, not all play, but, but sometimes you have to re have some recreation. You have to be able to know when to switch off, have a change of pace. So some determination has to be there to control the senses, to regulate these things. Don't eat too much, don't eat too little. Don't sleep too much, don't sleep too little. This is determination. Thank you, Mara. Thank you. Thank you for wonderful answer. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, I got one question, Maharaj. Yes, Prabhu. Uh, Maharaj, uh, how are people inclined in uh, Thailand, Hong Kong, uh, Taiwan, China area towards hearing? Uh, because uh, we see so much of material opulence in such countries, so uh, how much they are inclined for hearing? Because you are preaching there, Mara, so that's why I was asking. Well, as I said, people are indoctrinated into a lot of atheistic philosophies. Some people, some people are communist, some people are Buddhist. It's all atheism, different forms of atheism. So. Atheists generally, they don't have any interest to hear about God. They don't want to hear about God. So, huh. Mara, how do you bring them to Krishna consciousness? What is the way? Lord Chaitanya's movement, by the chanting of the holy name and by prasadam, and then we inject a little bit philosophy, little, little bits of philosophy. The real potency comes in kirtan, a nice program of chanting, dancing, and nice prasada, nice association. You make friends with people. You know, there are a lot of lonely people in the world. There are people suffering. They may not have, they don't have a good philosophy, they're atheists, they're communists, they're Buddhists, whatever, 
they're suffering. And the people who are suffering and lonely, they, they look for company, they want to have some friend, they want to have some, somebody to speak to them and to encourage them. So this is the de devotee. You give your association to people. You go and try to make friends and meet people and just be nice to them. That's Krishna consciousness, making friends and giving, just like, how did Prabhupada do it when he went to America? Did, did people just want to hear? Well, they heard a little bit, but mainly Prabhupada was cooking for them and he was talking to them and tell them about India. You know, you talk about India and life in India, different thing, let them hear. A little bit philosophy, a little bit philosophy little bit here and there, just you, we have to know how to give the medicine, right? You don't just only speak philosophy, but the real thing is making friends and encouraging people, giving them some shelter, helping them to feel comfortable in your association. And, and this... Yeah. Uh, like we see in India, like we see most uh, most of the places now, the percentage of Mataji's is much more than the Prabhu is joining our movement. This is the same condition there as well that like 80-90% uh, Mataji's are joining but Prabhu's are not coming much to our movement. Uh, and, and how to rectify the situation? Yes, it, it's certainly true. We have that phenomena in China that we get a lot of ladies there and we get less men. So what we started to do, we started to put more emphasis on cultivating men and we made a separate program for the men. In some places they have, they have their own class, just men, you see, and it makes it much easier for men to come. But it certainly I, I, I didn't, when, when I joined the movement, actually, when I joined the movement, there were only two ladies and there were about 20 men. It, that was in London, and, you know, when I joined. So it, so it, it varies, you know. It, it, we go through phases, you get periods where you get all women joining for all, and then, then you start thinking about it, you make more different programs and then you can attract men. If you want men, you can definitely find them. You have to be looking for them. You have to go out and find them. You have to attract them. You have to make some attempt to reach them. You have to create the right mood to attract the men. If the men come and see a lot of women controlling everything, they don't usually like it. And one of all these countries, where all saffron, wearing saffron is allowed and where it is not allowed? In China, it's not allowed. We don't do it in China. But in the places, huh? places like Thailand, Hong Kong, Taiwan, there it is allowed. Yeah. Yeah, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Thailand, yeah, no problem there. These countries are open. You can wear the devotee dress. We go around in devotee dress there. Not a problem. So what kind of topics are very relevant for them, which are very clicking for them? Uh, what kind of topics like we take uh, teaching? Well, particularly that we find m m controlling the mind and senses, getting peace of mind, coping with stress, you know, just being able to relax and what is how to how to achieve happy life. You know, some people are married, family life, and they want to know about, you know, how to, how the family can live happily, more happily, how to deal with the problems in the family. So sometimes these, like that, married life is a problem, need, people need guidance. Sometimes uh, people need to learn basic, basic principles about morality and cleanliness. Just learning about higher culture, different culture. 
Am I aware temple making temple is allowed? I, I know China is a atheist country, so they must not allow. Uh, but uh, but other places here making temple is allowed. Like Thailand, do they allow making a temple or? Yeah. Buddhist yes, Thailand. Thailand is legal there. Thailand is legal. Hong Kong is legal. Taiwan is legal. You can make temples there. Costs a lot of money. <laughs> not easy. Not very easy because because Buddhism has been there so long, and Buddhism is so well established, and they have all the you know so many you know people in, in the, under their control. People are already supporting, they're already convinced and indoctrinated into the Buddhist philosophy. Not very easy to, to convince them. Why do Buddhists feel threatened by our presence? Because we look like them, we also have bald heads, they also have bald heads. They also we are saffron, we are saffron like. like they have red color, we have saffron. So do they feel threatened uh, seeing our existence there? No. No, I've never, I've never heard that they felt any threat from us because we're very small. We haven't been able to attract a lot of people in these countries. Our devotees, for example, in Thailand, we have mostly our, our devotees there are Hindu. They're from Nip, they're from Burma, Nip, Hindu, Nepali, who come from Burma. Most of our devotees there, and we have a few Thai people. It's we're working trying to cultivate more Thai people. It's not easy because it's it's a new philosophy, and you know, and, and you have to understand these countries. They've seen monks, so they've seen monks before. It's not like in the West where we hadn't seen monks before, and so we were attracted. But in the, these countries, they, they've grown up with monks. They've seen monks all their life. Doesn't mean anything to them. So. And sometimes when they read our books, they also find it difficult. They think we are Christian because they talk about God. And they think the only people who believe in God are Christians. Oh. It's kind of difficult for them to understand. They, they, some people even said to me, they said, oh, in India, do people also believe in God? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they have these ideas, you know, that India is all, you know, what... Atheism or, something, or what, Mayavadi, Mayavadi, because everybody's God, so there's no real meaning to God. And so sometimes, sometimes, sometimes it's very difficult to get through this kind of thinking, this kind of thinking, this mentality that there is God. You see, that's the, the most difficult thing to get to actually convince that God is a person and that you can pray to Him. You know, they haven't been brought up to pray. In some pl many people, they, they don't have that habit to pray. And one in case a devotee confronts a very hardcore Buddhist person, uh, how he would actually deal with him to convince him to Krishna consciousness? So, what steps he would take? Step one, step two, step three to convert a hardcore Buddhist into a Hare Krishna devotee. Well, we we encourage them join the kirtan, take part in kirtan. That's very important. If they can just take part in the kirtan, then the holy name is very powerful. You know, I, we, I, I did have cases sometimes, you know, some Buddhist monks, they, they, they liked the kirtan, but they wouldn't chant. They would only sit and meditate while we chanted. Oh. And they said, this, oh, this kirtan is very good for our meditation. But they wouldn't chant themselves, you see. So sometimes difficult to get, but if they can actually chant, if they will actually chant themselves, if they will take part in the chanting, then that's very good. But then also you have to, we have to go a bit further than that because they chant, they still have their Buddhist ideas, you know, that, that oh, this is just a mantra, that Krishna and ultimately nothing is real. And, you know, this is just a mantra to get us away from the material world and understand everything is illusion. And why do we, uh, do we say such things as, Lord Buddha only came so that uh, uh, the misuse of Vedas can be stopped, uh, to stop knee teaching and all that. So he gave us semi-philosophy. Do we say such things and do people accept it? Oh yeah, because there's more than one Buddha. There's, there's, there's several, there's a lot of Buddhas, you see. So, but there's this one Buddha, we, the one Buddha we have, we say he's a, 
you know, avatar of Vishnu and he came to stop the animal killing. And yeah, they can accept that. And do Buddhists eat meat, Maharaj? I've seen many Buddhists say they do meat. Well, there, there are two schools of Buddhism. There's two schools. One is called Theravada and one is called Mahayana. Mahayana is the more uh, modern one and they, they're, they're usually vegetarian. You find Mahayana Buddhism in Taiwan and in uh, Malaysia. But the other one, the, the Theravada, which comes from Sri Lanka and in Burma and in Thailand, they eat everything. Because they say, well, whatever people give us, we eat. So they, they have the culture that they go to the market and they stand in the market and they beg. And people come and they give them. And they'll give them meat, fish and everything. I was staying one time, I was doing some Sankirtan in Thailand and I, I, I stayed in the Buddhist temple. So the next morning the monk asked me, he said, would you like something to eat? So I told him, I said, I'm a vegetarian. So he said, oh, then we have nothing. <laughs> Everything they had was meat, fish and eggs, you know. <laughs> and what do they, do, do they uh, remain monk or after some time being in monkhood, they also get married? Oh, yeah. That's, that's standard practice in, in Buddhism. That Many people, they have that have, they become a monk and they'll become a monk for six months or something or a year and then they'll get married. Even the, I remember one, one of our devotees, her son, uh, it, it was arranged by her grandmother, his grandmother, that he became a monk. And he became a monk for, you know, a few months, lived in the temple for a few months. And after a few months, then they have a ceremony coming in, becoming a monk, and then a ceremony going out. And so, it, it's, it, you know, it's just a standard thing. You become a monk and any time you can leave, you can go out. They do a, a, cer a ceremony usually. You give up the monkhood. And how do they take our books, Maharaj? Are they very positive about our books? I haven't heard much response from them about our books. I have good readers? They're not good readers. But at least in, in Thailand, we generally find today, in China people read nicely. China we get a good response. We do find, you know, it's a bigger market there and people are they're more, they read more. They read more than in Thailand. Taiwan people, they're very busy. They, you know, the emphasis is really on work hard, economic development. They, they read a little, not much. They like our books. Some people like our books, but still, I didn't see much response from it. That they, it's not like people come to hear after reading the books. We just think, like, huh? uh, like in China, when people, when like police see that we are distributing religious books, so do they arrest the devotees, or do they just warn devotees, or are they okay with that? Well, Taiwan, they're okay with it, but Thailand, it's not allowed because Thailand and, and they have the Buddhism, the Buddhist not supposed to, the monk is not supposed to collect money. I see. Okay. In Thailand. In China, Maharaj, in China, does police take, police take any action or do they, do they just warn or just they're out there okay with it? Yeah, China. but yeah, China, China, they, they don't allow these things either. Not even in uh, formal clothes? Not even? Well, it, 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 they didn't allow, I don't know about now with the COVID, uh, now the economy is not so good, they were encouraging people, they could, but you know, you're not allowed to, you're not allowed to pros proselytize, you're not allowed to go out there and try to convert people to a religion, that's not allowed in China. In urban China, they don't allow, but in rural China, they are liberal, they are easygoing. Is it like that? Well, well, rural China, people in the countryside, they're usually not so educated people. Uh, I've never heard that. You know, if, you, if I mean, if you were to go into the countryside, they would be very curious, what are you doing there, you know? You, you, no foreigners will go there like that, and 
there's a lot of rules and regulations about movement of foreigners, where you can go and what you can do and what you can't do. And it's very tightly controlled, very, very tightly. Everywhere they've got people, government people and agencies and, you know, you, you can't just do what you want. Thank you so much, Maharaj. We got to know so much about your preaching and, and the way you're preaching so nicely and so many practical uh, answers you gave for the, for the questions. And uh, we are very, very happy to uh, hear from you, Maharaj. And you took such an important words and you highlighted about hearing. Thank you. So, so very kind of you, Maharaj. We pay our gratitude to you by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, 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 Hare, 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 Ram, 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 Hare, Ram, 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 
you know, material world, this is a material world, there is danger everywhere. And so we take precautions, we're careful, at the same time we understand that maybe Krishna wants us to go. Krishna wants the devotee to leave. So if Krishna uses this disease to take the devotee out, to take him out, put him in some other place. For a devotee, devotees are not under the laws of karma. If we're acting always in Krishna consciousness, engaged in devotional service, there's no karma for a devotee. But there is Krishna's plan. Sometimes Krishna is the plan of Krishna to take a devotee out of one situation, take him to another place, some more important preaching project to be done, some other place. We have to understand what is Krishna's plan. So we're surrendered to Krishna's plan. We do our best, but at the same time we're surrendered to Krishna. No desire other than Krishna's desire. That's surrender. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Deeply grateful to you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Anybody else has a question? Maybe last question now. We are done. Okay, Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Thanks to you, Maharaj. Srila Prabhupada ki. Go back to Vrinda ki jai.